Just got back. It's a hot take on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time all round. It felt like it was separate, actually, from all the MCU bullshit, uh, which were quite actually refreshing. And it is a bit sad that it's not really, because I was thinking, I know this is probably the last one they're going to do all together, and I was thinking, I'd just watch them. Fuck all the other madness that's going on. Just let them go on adventures. And I'd watch that for years. Rocket. For those who've seen it, I won't include any spoilers in this, but uh, I cried. I cried at a raccoon. Don't know what that says about me. But that storyline is, mwah, yeah. And it would actually make me go back and watch them and probably think differently about the first two. It's a lot more violent as well. Like, there's a scene where they're scrapping and, like, Mantis gets her arm snapped, but it's really, like, in the camera, you know what I mean? It's a bit, whoa. And there's the F-bomb, you know. It's, uh... It's better. In fact, the Guardians would be so much better if it were an 18. I don't know if this is a spoiler, half a spoiler. No one dies. Yeah. I was expecting the lead character to die. But yeah, they all just went the separate ways sort of thing. Which was actually surprising. So he's double bluffed me. Yeah, it's not all it's not all gravy though. Um, the plot is a little bit messy at points, to be honest with you. This The Will Poulter character, this Adam Warlock, uh, completely pointless. Didn't need to be in it. The whole Sovereign didn't need to be in it. I don't know, like a second villain to the main villain. And I just didn't really see the point. And this main villain's like... Yeah, it didn't really make sense why he just didn't go after him and kill them all. Because they were really powerful. They were getting this other guy to do it. Just a bit messy in parts. I had a really That's disappointing though, because I did like his character. He just wasn't really utilised in the plot enough. And there's a dog in Guardians now. I'm sure now you're all going to probably say it's sacrilege that I don't know this dog in the Guardians, but this is the problem with the MCU, like I missed that Christmas special or whatever the fuck they did on Disney+, Plus, and now I'm joining new Guardians not knowing what's going on. You know, you've seen, you've grown a bond with that dog that I haven't, you know what I mean? I don't know this dog, and I'm going to be backing it through this space adventure. So anyway, I guess I can blame myself for that, but it's you're expecting too much of the audience to run around after you're picking up all these little shows here and there that you're doing in mass quantities. It's unfair to ask. Uh, last point, the Guardians movies have always been known for the soundtrack, and this one is uh, no exception to that. They used uh, Dog Days by Florence and the Machine, and yeah, it's used superb. Uh, and I cried when that came on as well. So have some of that. I, I got the feeling that it might be one of the last Marvel films I go to watch, just because it was quite a close into the MCU that I know, really. The quickly steering away from every original Phase 1, Phase 2 characters. So, yeah, it's it's lost on me a little bit. I think they're in bother me. Until they bring Tony Stark back, they're in bother. So go see it. Definitely worth a watch. It's uh, seven and a half. Two eight. I'll go eight. I'll give it an eight. Just that little bit of a messy plot that did it for me. But other than that, yeah, good ride.